I'm working on a log cabin and we have a little bit of rot problem and uh, it's very interesting because this is actually a covered area where this is rotting and you can see it it's moving here it's definitely rotted so what I'm thinking is maybe when they're clearing the snow off in the winter away from the doorway they're throwing it up against the house here and it's worked its way down through these cracks because it's very covered you've got probably a four foot overhang up above here or when the snow comes it's drifting and it's just building up in this corner uh, you do have cracks over here that everything's solid and i'm going to end up putting some uh, big stretch in those cracks i've got to go over the whole house but i've got to fix these first This is an interesting spot because it pulls right into the corner of the house. So I'm going to have to try to cut this out to here and up in here it starts getting solid. So I'm probably, I can hear the difference. Listen, I may cut it out right here and this cut's going to be interesting because I'm going to have to cut it out and I'm also going to have to notch this front of the log to where it's similar to this. This one probably stuck it. I've noticed in this particular cabin that all of the bottom is further in than the second one. It's like they used a little smaller log here and then went to a larger one. Small one, large one. They kind of countered it. So I have what I have out there. We're going to take and try to cut it. This one should be a whole lot easier. I did have another video I released on a large one. It was a much more difficult, but I think this one will be a little easier. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I use the tarp, not necessarily because I'm real worried because this is an outside patio area, you can sweep it up, but when you chip all this out, you can throw it on here and carry it off out into the woods or whatever you're going to do with it a whole lot easier. If you're somewhere where you have to throw it away, you can still carry it off easier and put it in a bag. So I try to leave this. Now there is a bottom railing here. And I try to leave this railing intact. I don't want to pull it off all the way down. It creates a lot more work. What I'll generally have to do is cut the end of the log a little bit to get it in. And then your chinking is going to cover everything. And I try to get off all this old chinking. I don't want to leave any of that. But what I would do um, is we're going to make a, a straight line here. This has a pretty good crack. But that can be sealed. I can still feel little in here. I'm thinking we're going to make it right about there. Let's see. Yeah. Let's do it this way. We're going to make it, we're going to try it right about there. So we're going to do that. And what I like to do is I will take my multi-tool. Sometimes I'll take my, uh, saws are reciprocating saw whatever you want to call it and I will make a starter line so that it breaks away clean yeah we're definitely soft right in here and where I have the good trim I want to cut my caulking or in this case it looks like chinking we're going to cut it back as well. Very, very soft right there. I will say this about the chinking. It's very strong. It does not cut it very easily. If 
you don't know about chinking, if you're in a part of the country where you don't have a lot of log homes and all, chinking used to be done with a mortar, and they would put the mortar in. Well, now they've since quit using the mortar because the mortar doesn't stretch. Chinking is almost like a caulk, but it's very strong, like a silicone, but it stretches a lot more, and it has a little texture to it. And this is a solid stain that we're going to go back with so i'm not real worried about it being very visible and you don't have to match the color now if you're working inside the home and it has chinking in there as well you're going to have to match that color here we don't have to worry about that so much but that nowadays they don't really use the mortar anymore they generally will use it. it's a big tube and it's called chink chinking so that's really what the difference is. So let's go ahead and start pulling some of this loose and let's see what it looks like. I usually use a big, this one's for a floor, fairly sharp on the ends. They have these also for other things that, uh, they have other other ones that are for bricks and stuff. You don't want that one, you want ones more for a floor. And actually, if you can find a bigger one, it's better. I didn't have one with me this time around, so I had to go purchase this one and it it's okay, it does the job. So you can see this is probably powder post uh, powder post beetles. It's so you know just crumbles. But I think we have a combination here of weather, which kind of opened it up to, to let them start getting in. One of the things, if you have a log cabin, is you want to make sure that you're filling these cracks because the water is running down into the logs over time. Let's see. You'll find these spots where the old limbs came out of the logs and they're usually harder to get through. If you start getting a lot of dust here, I would recommend putting a mask on. I'm kind of out here with a little breeze, so the stuff tends to blow away from me. But if you start having that problem, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. All right. Yeah, it's getting solid, more solid here, so that's actually a good sign. And we're going to work our way through it. And so what I'm going to do now, just so I don't bore you guys to death, you kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to put it on time lapse and let you guys kind of see it in a little bit faster motion as I try to clear this out and get it back. And we're going to try to go back probably to the to four inches. I don't want to go real far, uh, far back. And this is called skinning, by the way. So when you, we're going to put a new skin over the old log, we cut the new piece and it'll go right in over the top. To get this piece out, I am going to have to pull, remove this piece, which I'm a little worried about. It looks like it's a cedar, but we're going to have to pull it out. So I've went and got my trim puller if you don't have one of these it's great for especially for moldings around the walls well, I'm going to try this to see if I can get behind it without breaking uh, what I would suggest doing is taking a cutting knife first try to cut loose the silicone the problem is the other side of this is the chinking and that chinking is very hard to cut loose it's not like regular silicone a regular caulk Tell you what I'm gonna attempt it though anyway just to try to give it a little bit of release the trim piece off and you can see how they put the backer board or backer rod 
big pieces of long hair to help seal and they have a lot of spray and foam as well now I don't know why they just didn't spray foam this all the way out kind of a crappy job all the way through here to be honest so we're gonna have to clean that up and I'm gonna have to clean these edges of this off I'm probably not gonna take this center part up but I'm going to clean the edges up so when I put the new one on I can seal that I don't know I may go ahead and cut those because if I cut those I can get new chinking in and make that a watertight seal and I think that's what it needs got a lot of this out, and I want to show you a little technique that I use. You can use a air operated hammer, like a little jackhammer type thing, hammer uh, drill they call it I guess. Uh, they use it a lot in automotive, those help. I like to use one of these Forrester bits, because I'll take the Forrester bit and it will not only make a round hole, but it takes everything out of the center. And I can drill down to a lot of the stubborn area, especially like this, where this limb had been coming out and it gets rid of a lot of material quickly and gets me down to that area that I need. So let me show you how it works. And then it makes it a lot easier to chip it out. There's multiple ways to do this, but this tends to work pretty good for me and I can be a little more precise usually. What I'm looking for is hard, solid wood. Another quick tip, if you can get to the chinking, I've already done the bottom too, you can use a razor knife, it'll take a few passes, it's a little easier to do, cut it loose, you may if you can get to the other side, do a little bit there, so anytime you're cutting out around the trim, now I'm still going to probably have to go back and pull a bunch of this. But it should make it easier to pull this stuff loose and save you a little time. Let's see. Still pretty tight there. That's coming loose. I'm going to go ahead and go up into the groove a little and get some of that out. I'll probably have to go back and cut that out. Let's see if we can get a hold of it. There we go. And you get a, off in a big chunk save you a little bit of effort. I 
have got this log that I used on a longer one. Matter of fact, I'm putting a video out on the long one. The long one I had some difficulty with. Uh, when you deal with long ones, it's a whole different ball game. But I'm going to try to use this one so I can save this log for future repairs on this cabin because I'll be taking care of this cabin going forward. And it's very hard to get this. Matter of fact, they had a couple week waiting period to get it. You would think out here in the middle of Colorado, with the trees everywhere, it'd be easy to find. Well, this is a particular uh, type of log, and it's not necessarily that easy. So, let's go ahead. What I'm going to do, since this is already long, I think it's going to be easier to kind of cut it down to the thickness long instead of fighting it as a small piece. I'll try to make my final cut the very end. Now when I come back and have to do trimming, I'm going to have to use screws and put a couple of like deck screws into it, into something else, maybe like this or another piece of wood to, to hold it in place while I trim. And when you get to, if you're doing final trim and you're pretty close, you can use a planer, which I'll probably have a little bit of that in the video later because I'm already doing a little planing. So we are at 17 inches, so I'm going to bring it out to 17. Now remember, these are probably not going to be cut straight. I can already tell that's crooked. Um, so 17 there, 17 here. I'm probably going to put the square on it to kind of get a feel of how off. Yeah, see, I can tell it's, it's off about a half inch. So we're going to go this way and make it a little long, probably on this side, and I can trim that. I'd rather be able to do that than not have enough. So now we've got that. I'm going to take the, we were looking at about three inches depth. So I'm going to measure from the bottom of my log in the center. You can tell the center from your uh, little, uh, the, the little roots. We've got to take quite a bit off and I'm not going to go all the way to three. I'm probably going to take it to four and then work my way down after I go fit it and see how it fits. So we're gonna go to here, like so. So I don't know if you can actually see that, but what I've done is I've got it here to here. And I'm gonna try to cut this chunk out down to my mark here. So if I can keep that depth. So what I did is I found my center, cut it, measured from both sides got it uh, as square as possible now keep in mind this is rough carpentry and this is a log it's not like a dimensional piece of lumber you buy in a home depot so it's going to be close it's not going to be exact that's why i'm leaving it about a good inch wider than what i need so i can go and place it and mark and kind of see where it's at and then come back and trim some more now the key is to try to keep the blade square flat even though I'm on an angle. Okay, so I got it cut. By the way, uh, my chainsaw is still running down there. You can hear it. Even if you were done and you're going to shut it off, you would still let it run a little to cool. Don't ever just shut it straight off. So this is going to be big, I can already tell you. So we're going to try to get a feel for how it looks. Probably going to have to cut some off of 
this side so that it'll slide in because of this because I can't put it at the bottom and just roll it up and um, obviously I know it's going to be thick so let's just see what it looks like as a first try well actually probably not going to have to cut any off the sides that's good I am going to need to straighten out an edge here because see I need this gap which I don't have and it's I'm thinking we need to cut this little edge off here so it can roll up so we're going to cut this off here so that it's even with this you can see how it's higher and that's keeping it from getting this line straight this is going to be my right side this is going to be my left now what I need to do, I've got quite a bit that's going to need to be taken out. Well, not really too bad. It's about what I suspected because that's the way we left it long. So we're going to have to go back. Technically, before I even trim that, we will just go ahead and trim this much off the top. So we'll measure, mark again, and trim it down. Now this time I'll probably have to put some screws in it to to do it I would do a planer but that's an awful lot to try to take out so we're gonna go back and do a little bit of that and see where we're at I'm gonna use this to help me hold it up because it'll make it a little easier but what you want to do you don't want to try to cut it with a saw like that it's dangerous so now if you notice when I was cutting while ago and cutting my grooves I tried not to stand in front of the groove I tried to stay off to the left of it because the chain snapped it could fly back over the top, hit you in the head. So you want to try to stay to the left. Now, cutting underneath is a little bit difficult. You're going to kind of be in front of it no matter which way you go. But you want to try to minimize that as much as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run. That's going to put a small hole. But what it's going to do, I can patch that. And matter of fact, depending on one of the sides, it's going to be cut off anyway, if you remember, because it's notched. But it will uh, hold this in place, make it safer. And these are just deck screws, the 25. Ah, there we go. All right, and I've got a wedge holding this in place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the marking that I made from this side. I need to take out about an inch and a half. Let's get the saw and let's see what we can do here. Let's see how much closer this is now. <sighs> Sorry, the mountain there. It's now I'm not totally used to it yet since I'm from Texas. The Colorado altitude, 9,000 feet, makes it a little hard to breathe. So, but let's see. Now it's not cleaned up yet, but this is going to give me an idea of where we are. So, I think that looks pretty good, but I may have. I think I'm going to want it this way. This is where we're at. It's been a couple of hours since I had the, the camera on. This was our original piece that I had cut. And I had left it a little proud on this side for the hole here. But when I put it in, I didn't really like the way this one fit. It fit okay on this back side. But this front side has a big chunk missing out of it. I cut a little too deep here. So that was one problem I didn't like. But then when I started examining it a little closer, I've got a check going all the way through, a deep check, and it goes all the way through the piece. So this would have made a weak spot. Now I could have caulked this with some of the stretch, but that's really not the correct way to do it. And anytime I do anything, I want to do it 110%, and that's the way you should be too. So what I did is I cut another piece, this one right here, and still left it a little proud on this side, not a whole lot. And I've already notched it out. I've got to clean all this up. But the way this fits is it's going to go in. And you'll notice I did take a little more out here to see the round spots. I took a little bit more of that hump out. Got it in. So now I have my spacing here for expansion. 
I'll have my spacing here where I'm going to put my chinking. And I'm going to build this side out just a little to bring it out. Now remember, this one already sets in fr further. You can look and see how much further that is than that one. So it already sets way in. What I'll do though is kind of get this fanned out. If this is proud a little of the edge trim, I'll just sand it. But that will be look a thousand times better and a thousand times stronger. Uh, much better piece than this first piece was. Sometimes you got to play with one just to find out what you did wrong. Now what I'm going to do is in this spot here that's indented, we're going to use the Durham's uh, Rock Hard Water Putty. Works really great. Mix is easy. You can mix it with a little stir stick or a little paddle mixer. And I will mix it a little high, a little proud of the spot, so that when it dries I can sand it and keep fitting this till I get it just where I want it and then that'll be good to go. I'll use a couple of probably about four finished screws so it puts small holes, put them through into here to help hold along with my Loctite, you know, liquid nails type product. Now the other thing I'm going to do though before I do this is I'm going to run to town real fast. Hopefully they're open. It's on a Sunday out in the country. Let's see if I can get some borate because I want to treat all this since it was so much damage in this area and treat it make sure that it doesn't come back. Another day, another dollar, as I say, and this is now the next day. I ended up having to go pick up the borate, soak this down. I've got another large section I'm doing at the same time right now, soaked it down. And unfortunately, that had to dry overnight before I could go to the next step. So I was kind of limited on what I could really do yesterday. And oh, to be honest, I was a little wore out. So we are going to go ahead and mix up some of the water putty. Now the name's a little bit deceiving on this one. It says putty, but it's actually a bunch of wood glues and some fine uh, like sawdust kind of mixed up. You can actually take, if you need this on a surface, and take regular sawdust, not these big chips, but you know, ground down sawdust and mix it in and it'll give it a little bit nicer texture. Now this stuff will generally uh, paint. I'm not real sure about the staining. Uh, yes, it says it takes most surface stains. So, and it will take water-based stain and water-based paint. Do not mix with any oil-based materials. Uh, putty may not harden. So you can actually mix some of your paint into the, the uh, water putty, which is really kind of cool. So it'll give it that stain and then you can go, that color, and then you can go over it. A very cool thing. So I'm going to show you how I mix it. I have a small spot right here that needs to be brought up just a little. So what I'm going to do is I pour a little water to start. That way it's easier to mix up and I just do it by hand. Now this stuff, you pour a lot of it. So if you pour too much water, you'll end up pouring a ton of it. And it sets up pretty quickly. So you can see how much I've had to pour in here already just to kind of cover that water. And I may still need a little more. So you're going to take it and I'm just going to use an old stir stick. It's pretty simple and I'm probably to apply it. I've got a plastic little spatula that I'm going to use. Let me move this out of the way, that way you can kind of see. That way the plastic one, it's easier to clean. I don't really have to mess with it. I have my good metal ones, but no need to use that on this. This is pretty simple. I say it's way, way too watery. So we're going to mix a little more. That consistency. Now, what I want to do is make sure that I get all of the stuff in it mixed. 
so it doesn't end up a lot of flaky spots. Now, of course, it's going to be covered. It doesn't matter too much on that, but I like that next. All right, so my little cheapy, we're going to take and put some on and just start applying. And if you have any cracks, it's a good idea to go ahead and hit those cracks with the putty and fill in those spots. I have some right there. That'll help lock that treatment in that I poured in there as well. And it'll help with cracking later down the road, help hold everything together, even though I'm going to be putting a whole bunch of the uh, Loctite on here. But this side needs out a lot more yet, so we're going to build it up a little more. Sometimes you have to do this in a couple of coats if it's a really deep one. I think we're going to be okay here. There we go. That's looking so much better. Let's see if I can go. You know, and I thought I was going to have way too much here. It looks like we're going to have just the right amount. Okay guys, this is dried pretty good. I've test fit it. It fits pretty well. We're going to go ahead and put our glue on, which is going to be the Loctite Premium Fast Grab is what this one is. It's actually the Premium, yeah, PL Premium. So we're going to put that on. But before I do that, I am going to pre-drill my holes. These are the screws that I'm going to use. They're four inches long, plenty long, small head using the star bit already rigged out and I have a small drill bit so what I'm going to do is pre-drill so I don't create any more cracks in this wood and kind of give it a head start you don't necessarily have to do that with these but I just think it's a good idea I see it trying to come through there maybe I just need a couple more little there we go, let's try that. 